but then we also had some uh, more interesting news um, as it pertains to coordinators. Um, this is when Coach Tomlin was asked about uh, Keith Butler. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, essentially he alluded to the fact that, you know, when they talked – Earlier in the season, everything was pointing to Keith Butler retiring this all season. He said at the time of the press conference, he hadn't spoken with Keith Butler again, but everything was pointing towards him retiring as well. So that becomes a little bit interesting because we talked about job security between our coordinators and we thought that Keith Butler probably had the most job security out of both of them. But we also yeah, yeah. threw out there, hey, if he retires, that makes I guess it a little it's bit opposite. interesting. Yeah, so now it's looking like Canada is going to be returning and Butler more than likely will be retiring. So if Keith Butler is retiring, which is, like I said, what Coach Tomlin said in his press conference, or at least alluded to, are we going in-house again? Because talking to yeah. some of the beat writers, yeah, they definitely are leaning Terrell Austin. Yep. That's that's everybody's that's that's who they've been saying. They say, you know, the team likes to promote from within. They already have rapport. He's been on the staff. And part of and, and one of the justifications for promoting from within is because the guys get to come in, get familiar with the staff, familiar with the way that they do business, and ultimately that's why they want to promote from within. But he is a name that continues to come up. So as we always do, y'all let me know in the chat. If y'all like Terrell Austin for the defensive coordinator spot, or would you prefer to go outside, right? Go outside of the organization because that has been one of the biggest criticisms, regardless of qualifications, is just we continue to promote from within. I don't have much of an opinion on him, to be honest with you. Yeah. Outside of just knowing that we're hiring from within, mm -hmm. probably the safer pick. I don't know what type of connections you have with him or how you feel. Like I said, I never played for him. Um and when I'm trying I was to go playing, over his resume, he was still right in Detroit. Now. Yeah. So let me go over his resume. As a coach, I'm not going to go back to the 90s. We'll go 2000s. Seahawks defensive backs coach, mm -hmm. 03 to 06. Cardinals defensive backs coach, 07 to yeah. 09. Florida defensive coordinator in 2010. Mm -hmm. Baltimore Ravens secondary coach, 2011 to 2013. Detroit Lions defensive coordinator, and you brought yeah. that up in the past. That's also, over like 14 time frame. Bengals defensive coordinator mm -hmm. in uh, 2018. One year. Yep. Yes. Then Steelers senior defensive. This, I don't even know. Oh, this yeah. The, the, senior the defensive title. assistant <laughs> slash secondary coach. Now, that makes you think the first title, uh -huh. senior defensive assistant, this has been in place for a while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they've been gearing them up. Because you just call them secondary coach then. Yeah. If. It's He's just like, going to be the secondary coach, but like no, they when, got him when, waiting uh, in the wings. It was kind of like when our D-line coach, Johnny Mitchell, went from defensive line coach to assistant head coach slash defensive line coach. We're like, oh, you're about to you know, go go into that front office role after this, huh? you just here for one more year coaching with us. Yeah, but... um, All right, the one year with the Lions, they nah, finished 11-5. and five. Yeah. Went to the wild card. Um... The Cincinnati year was the one that stood out as a bad year for right, me. Right, right, right. But we also remember in 18, that was when they were doing the big transition as well for them. So I understand the context with it. Detroit is the interesting part, though. Tomlin must have had his eye on him then. Yeah. To be senior defensive assistant, mm. bring him in after def defensive coordinator stints with the Bengals and the Lions. Yeah. Maybe he thinks he's talented or something. I don't know. I don't have too too much of an opinion on it. I mean, I would like to go out of house. At the same time, yeah. could we give this dude a chance maybe? I mean, he does have at least more experience than us bringing in Canada or like Clem last year yeah. with the offensive line. Very true. I think he has a, at least a little bit more pedigree. Yeah, so it's like... Minka Fitzpatrick spoke highly of him. For me... Well, Is that just think, though, player speak? Probably. Well, no, no, no. Not just player speak. What was his title? The second part of his job title, secondary coach. Right, right. right. So, of course, Meek is going to speak highly of him. A guy like Edmonds will probably speak highly of him. And if you're Coach Tomlin, if you feel like you're going to keep that group together, right, you're going to re-sign Edmonds. You like, you know, Trey Norwood. You're going to make a decision on whether it's Joe Hayden and Keller Weatherspoon, both of them potentially. If you feel like you like that group and they had success under that coach, then I could see where – you could easily talk yourself into it with those uh, accolades that he's had. But once again, for me, I just ask myself, are we wash, rinse, repeat? And we're going to be sitting here hollering about the same things a couple years from now. Even though he's qualified to an extent, 
can we find better? Because that's the other part. It's like just because a guy is qualified doesn't mean that he's the right candidate for the job. Yeah. Just because a guy has uh, credentials doesn't mean that he fits what you're trying to accomplish. And even though it might make sense in terms of, oh, yeah, he speaks our language. You know, he's been here a couple of years. Well, these past couple of years, we have felt like we've been underperforming. We felt like, you know, we've left something out there on the table offensively and defensively. So it's like, why wouldn't you just for the sake of say, you know what? I want to go and get me somebody that has not been here. Somebody that's not from here that might do things a little different, might operate with a higher standard, right? Versus somebody that's already been here, somebody that's already comfortable with the players, and the players are looking at him and saying, well, hey, man, this is my position coach that got promoted to D.C. I'm good. You know how? Because I said that. A lot of us did in 2015 when we went from Keith Butler being our position coach to now he's the defensive coordinator. we like, oh, our teacher became the principal now. We're running things. That's what it felt like. It was like, yo, that's our teacher. He runs all of this, but he was ours first. So we got a little, you know what I mean? We, we felt like we could do a little bit more with him or less just because of the personal relationship. Could that easily happen with the secondary if you promote from within? And could that easily result in some loose play? Yes. That's the part for me where I just say, well, maybe going outside could work. No doubt. And it worked with Haley. Yeah. I wonder, is defense, because it's like Tomlin's thing, he That's wants the more of like part, the oversight, bro. whereas with the offense, bringing in Haley, it wasn't that yeah. big of a deal to him. And I do feel like what you just said right there also pisses me off about the candidate thing, because it's like, if you know you're a defensive-minded <laughs> coach, if you know you have your hand on defense, essentially, the offensive coordinator gets to actually be offensive coordinator. We said with Keith Butler, it's like, you're defensive coordinator, but it's like, your slash because we know coach Tomlin still works in that vein and you're always going to share credit with him. We don't say that about the offense outside of the bin factor. The office coordinator gets to run the offense. Yeah. So it's like, why would we're outside you, of Tomlin you know saying, saying run it on this fourth yeah. down. Let's go for it. So it's like, when you think about that, why wouldn't you want to spend more or get a more qualified higher end coordinator for the offensive side? If you're going to be having your hand on the defensive side, if you're going to have your hand on the defensive side, yeah, go with Austin. Go with the guy that, you know, might be a transitional guy because you feel like, hey, I'm good enough calling the defense that we can work this thing out and we'll be fine. If that's the case, cool. But give me somebody that has at least been successful in the NFL as a coordinator. Because this next year, you think this year was tough for Canada? Man, when you talk about dealing with rookie quarterback, you talk about dealing with non-franchise quarterbacks, it is a difference. <laughs> It is a big difference, man. And I just personally would like to have a higher end version of that. That's all. How many times do you see? I mean, you saw it this year with uh, Dan Quinn even, with the mm -hmm. Cowboys. The dudes that go up in the ranks as like mm -hmm. awesome defensive coordinators, you know, fail as head coaches, but come back and then are awesome defensive coordinators. Like yeah. Wade Phillips even. That's mm -hmm. another great example. Wade Phillips, yeah. He, he failed with the name, Cowboys, but was an awesome defensive coordinator. In Denver, awesome. Houston, absolutely, man. Yeah. So why can't we do that with all these dudes that are getting fired left and right? Yeah. I don't see why that's not a feasible option. Yeah, but bro. there's all those factors at play that we just talked about. Maybe Tomlin, because he's the defensive guy, wants to oversee that a little bit more. He doesn't mm -hmm. want to be butting heads with a dude that probably does have an ego, especially if they rose the ranks of a head coach. Yep. They made a name for themselves as a defensive coordinator. So, yeah, there's, there's a bunch of different stuff at play. And, I mean, this guy does have the experience, but – no, it is frustrating. It definitely is frustrating. Yeah. Now, especially when you combine the two, when you yeah. combine the two. Like if we had Doug Peterson last year, offensive coordinator, I don't mm -hmm. know what decisions we would be making with him this offseason. But if we at least had him and then we said, all right, Butler's retiring, we're promoting Terrell Austin. It's like, okay, yeah. at least we did that like with the offense. Right. Like we'll trust Tomlin with the defense here, Terrell Austin, this and that. But no, nah, it's like on both sides of it. Yeah. It's not one or the other. It's very A little bit more glaring that way, I guess. Yeah. And like I said, it comes to a head and it becomes more, uh, you know, important to talk about when we're not having postseason success. This is a different conversation if the past three years mm -hmm. we can say, hey, you know, we've won two playoff games or, you know, we had an ASC championship game appearance, something along those lines, but we can't. And in a lot of those moments – we're asking ourselves what's going on schematically. We're asking ourselves what's going on preparation-wise. We're asking ourselves coaching questions. And 
I'm just tired of doing it. You know, every single year, it's like, why do we have to do this, man? We need to spend a little more, man. Let's upgrade. Absolutely. Let's do it the right way. I think with our cap situation, we could go over personnel moves mm-hmm. where we could be making. We can have a pretty damn good team next year, I think. Mm-hmm. The only question, the biggest question will obviously be, be quarterback, but no, nah, we could definitely yeah. bolster up the defense. There's easy moves to make for the offensive line. We still got a bunch of young talent in there. So mm-hmm. if we don't have the coaches right, and we're dealing with maybe some of the same shit. It's like, come on, man. Yeah. Come on. 